<clears throat> this is a screencast on the acid catalyzed ketalization of a ketone to a ketal with ethylene glycol using paratoluene sulfonic acid in toluene at 100, 100, and, uh, 100 degrees. So first thing is to just point out here, the ketone starting material is at an oxidation state of 2 with an sp2 hybridized carbon. It's being transformed into an sp3 hybridized carbon that is still at oxidation state 2. And so what you're looking at is the formation of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 membered ring where four of those carbon or four of those atoms are coming from the ethylene glycol. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the fifth uh, atom is the carbon that stays at oxidation state 2. So that's what you're looking for in these reactions. What you'll also notice is essentially it's the loss of H, H, and O. So loss of H2O. So this is formally known as a condensation reaction. So what we're going to do is show the mechanism of how this goes uh, from a neutral change in oxidation state, so 2 to 2, and the hybridization changes from sp3 to sp2. So to make the <clears throat> mechanism a little bit faster, I'm just going to call this HX, where X is the paratoluene sulfonate anion uh, of the ptosic acid. So the first thing that we're going to do under these conditions is a proton transfer so we'll draw the electrons on the carbonyl oxygen. And so we're going to do an acid-base reaction in which the carbonyl group is protonated. So proton transfer reactions, um, it's important to draw them out and know them because we are under acidic conditions. The oxygen is always going to be neutral. So we're starting neutral, and then we're going to go to a positive charged intermediate. And so <clears throat> these reactions are run under reversible conditions. So there's our arrows for that. We have the carbonyl. We've protonated it, so the plus charge is now on the oxygen. We're balancing that off with... <laughs> The negative charge on the paratoluene sulfonate anion. And so now notice the hybridization of the carbon uh, of the carbonyl group is still sp2. And so at this point um, it's good to show a resonance form of this so that we can see what is going to happen. So we push electrons from the double bond onto the oxygen. The oxygen now is neutral. The carbon's plus. Still balanced off by the negative charge of the anion. So this is indicating to you where the oxygen uh, of the ethylene glycol has to attack. So now we're doing uh, electrophile nucleophile. So the electrophile is the carbocation. An oxygen of the ethylene glycol is the nucleophile, so that's going to attack. So notice now <clears throat> the sp2 hybridized carbon now becomes sp3 hybridized. And now that oxygen bears the plus charge. So we're now sp3 hybridized. So, you know, from here on out, it's, again, important to start um, drawing out the proton transfers. So what we can do is have the conjugate base abstract 
push electrons back onto that oxygen. So this species at this point is going to be neutral. And so we have, we'll draw it over here, H, X, there's our acid. So one thing I forgot to mention is this is typically done in a, a catalytic amount. We can say uh, 0 0.1 mole percent, which means for every one mole of starting material, we're using a tenth of a mole of catalyst. So look at the charges now, we're neutral. And so again, <clears throat> what we need to do and I'll highlight in red, we have to get rid of OH and H. So that's gonna guide us uh, in what we need to do. And remember, oxygen has to be neutral or, or positively charged in this mechanism. So we're gonna draw the lone pairs on this alcohol, do an acid-base transfer, So now this oxygen is positively charged. And at this point, <clears throat> as I said, this carbon is sp3. But notice that um, the oxidation state is still two, one bond, one bond. What's going to happen is this oxygen is going to do an elimination of water. So that's where we lose the water at this point. So lone pairs here. This is an elimination formation of a pi bond. Water is going to leave, minus H2O. Let's draw in our... Balance our charges. So now look, oxygen at this point is plus. We have the counter ion minus. And so we can draw a resonance form for this. Again, where the carbonyl bond breaks, we put the plus charge on the carbon that indicates that's the electrophile now. Oxygen gets its two lone pairs back. So we have in this um, intermediate here, the electrophile is plus, the nucleophile is neutral, so this oxygen is going to attack that carbon. So notice when we do that, we're forming a bond, but we're not breaking a bond at this point. So as you learn these mechanisms and you draw them out, you'll see the nuances in how the intermediates react. So we said it was a five-membered ring. Now this oxygen is still positively charged. We have the counter ion. This is going to do a proton transfer and regenerate our acid, HX. And at this point, we end up with our neutral product, our ketal. So this is called a ketal because the oxidation state to carbon which is now sp3 hybridized, has a carbon and a carbon substituent. So ketone goes to ketal, and we've regenerated the catalytic acid. So that catalytic acid then goes back to the starting material here and converts another molecule of that ketone. So these arrows are reversible, which means the reaction's going to eventually set up some equilibrium. And we can drive that equilibrium to completion through the removal of water at this stage. 
And typically what will happen, because we're running this at 100 degrees, we can reflux or boil out the water produced. So that is uh, a way in which we can affect the Le Chatelier's um, equilibrium by removing one of the product's water, driving it to the formation of the ketal. And this is typically done using an apparatus called a Dean Stark trap. The toluene will actually uh, azeotrope out the water. And so these reactions typically take a couple hours, um, but the, the Dean Stark apparatus is set up so that when the water collects in the piece of glass, you can see it separate out from the toluene. And again, that's due to a density. So toluene, water. So you'd see that phase separation. And so again, this has been a screencast on the conversion of a ketone, which is oxidation state two with an sp2 hybridized carbon to a ketal, same oxidation state two. Now the carbon is sp3 hybridized. So again, the reason this reaction is run, the ketone is susceptible to nucleophilic attack either by hydride or carbanions, because remember we said we can reduce oxidation state two to oxidation state one to form alcohols. But if you don't wanna do that, you can protect it as a ketal. So essentially this is a protecting group. And the reason you would wanna do that in a synthetic sequence, if you wanna retain, whoop, If you want to retain the oxidation state two through the entire sequence, you would need to protect it. And then ultimately, when you want to deprotect it, essentially is you, you take the ketal with excess water, the catalytic amount of acid, and it will go through this reverse arrows of the equilibrium. So the reaction will run back the other way to give you the ketone starting material. So it's important to know how to control the equilibrium of the reaction, the, the mechanistic, mechanistic steps of the reaction, resonance forms that inform you of electrophile, nucleophile interactions, proton transfers. So we see the regeneration of the catalyst here, a protonation, an elimination, <clears throat> a resonance form, nucleophile, electrophile, another proton transfer, and then product formation. So I strongly encourage you as you learn these new reactions to either draw it on your, your iPad, your, your tablet, whatever, paper. Uh, really put, put your hand down, draw these things out. It gets, gets you familiar with the functional groups, doing the arrow pushing again. On the exams, you'll see the arrow pushing in terms of forming uh, the sequence of digits. And I think what a common mistake is when answering those is that students are not putting these arrows in. If you put the arrows in, it's essentially gonna tell you what number to start, stop, start, stop. That way you'll get your sequence of digits correct.